Hello, everybody. Hello. We are back. And we're back on camera. Yes, we are. I think TikTok brought us out of the hole. <laughs> yeah, we took a break for a long time uh, because of, you know, everything that was going on in the world. And uh, we decided to come back and uh, start doing more book related videos on this channel. So today we are going to talk about our top five each books that we read in the month of April. So it's going to be super fun. And yes. interesting. <laughs> I think and as interesting, well. yes. yes. I think as well. <laughs> yeah, so tell me, how many books did you read? I only read seven this month. Uh, but we're going to get into why. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I, I read 17. Uh, and I actually, this is my second highest month this year, which was surprising to me because I have been in a reading slump for a couple months. And I think now I'm finally starting to like climb up out of that for sure. Yeah, I need to climb up out of that too because it's been a slump for me too. I feel like. Mm hmm. Yeah. Kind of. And then as far as pages, I read uh, 6,138 pages. Wow. I yeah. read 2,100. It's. The books that you read, though. <laughs> Again, we'll get there. We will, we will get there. When we talk about our top five books, normally they're like my highest rated books. But this month, I actually had a five star read that is not on my top list for reasons. But I believe this book is on Marshall's list. So we will talk okay. about it eventually. I had so many four and a half star books that I am, I, I, it boggles my mind <laughs> how many four and a half star books I had. So they were very, very close to five stars. So I would say my entire list are books that I would genuinely just be like, I want to read these books again. I feel like they were just so good, not just because of the writing, but because of my enjoyment of them. So that's kind of why they made it onto my list, even though I had so many four star books this month. Mm, yeah, I had really just two five star and a few four star with one three star that we don't even talk about. Won't. It didn't reach my list. No. If you are looking for other books that I have read, feel free to join me on Instagram or TikTok because I literally review every single book that I have read there uh, because, you know, it's a little shorter. I can do one book at a time. Mm -hmm. Really great. Let's dive in. Sure. Sure. Any honorable mentions out of you? I actually have two. Uh-oh. Um, one of which, I don't know if you finished reading, but you might I be did. in the middle. Oh, did you finish reading this? Yes, and it's my it's my honorable mention as well. All right, so let's talk about this honorable mention. Go ahead. I'll let you do it. The Dungeon Meister's Cookbook. Mm -hmm. This is by Jeff Aldrich and John Taylor. And this book is based... It's a cookbook. Sure. Mm -hmm. All of the flavor recipes that are in here, they're given names that are based off of Dungeons and Dragons and tabletop role-playing games and fun like that. But most of them are also designed to be eaten around the table mm -hmm. that is being used. So things like pizza bagels. You can each have your own and it doesn't have to take up the entire table. Right. But also, these recipes were very healthy. Yeah, well, somebody. not all of them. Some of them. <laughs> I think that's what I liked about it, too, is that they... I real, I fully went into this cookbook thinking, well, it's just going to be kind of like a fun-themed thing. And I won't be able to eat most of this stuff because it's all, like, greasy lard bombs. But they're not. Like, a lot of them were actually semi-light healthy and then the other ones were greasy lard bombs I mean, and then they had stuff in the middle so it was like really for everyone one of the ones that i really loved the idea of was the good berry mm. which isn't actually a berry but it is like th they took a date they stuffed it with cheese they wrapped it in bacon and baked it mm -hmm. and i'm like that just sounds good. Mm -hmm. So while I did read this book, and I think you did as well, read it uh, digitally, mm -hmm. it is definitely in my Amazon cart to get a physical copy of this book because I think we actually might use it in the future. Again, if you are interested in D&D, &D, you might want to follow this one over on TikTok. He is quite blowing up on the D&D &D content. Apparently. I was not expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> so my uh, second honorable mention is called The Edge of In Between by Lorelei Saverin. Now, a fun fact about this 
this book, I was following the author on TikTok. I kind of came across her and uh, knew she had a book coming out. It is a Secret Garden retelling and I love The Secret Garden. It's one of my favorite musicals. I love the book. I will read pretty much anything that's like a Secret Garden retelling and this book was uh, an interesting take. It is kind of about a creepy house but it's also about magic and it's about when people lose their hope or lose uh, their ability to be happy they become gray. So like they're fully colorful when they're happy and whatever and they have their magic. But then when they lose their magic and they lose their happiness, they become gray. So this book is kind of a commentary also on sorrow and uh, losing hope, but it's also getting that back. And it, and it just, it really had an interesting twist in it. Uh, but it's it's a middle grade young adult type book too. So keep that in mind as you're reading it. This was a very easy read, but it was so magical and enjoyable. And I just had to put it on the list because I thought it was just so fun. That sounds really cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is really cute. The first book that we're going to talk about off of my list. My number five mm -hmm. is another cookbook. <laughs> yep. This is Jar Cootery by Suzanne Billings. And this was actually my five star read for the month. <laughs> but I thought it's a cookbook. I'm not going to put it on my list <laughs> as one of my top five. This is this is a book where it's charcuterie, mm -hmm. but they're all built into jars. So they're all designed to be just take a jar. That's what you eat, which makes it really great for social distancing at a party. Right, but it also makes it very good for like portioning. So yes. like if you want to create like a snack or a like just a light meal in a jar, you can just take that with you wherever you're going, just grab yeah. one out of the fridge. Like it was the cutest cookbook. It was so beautiful. Yeah, and there's very little cooking actually right. involved. This is also great for like gifts. Mm -hmm. So, and you combine this with the Dungeon Meister's cookbook, and y you just have the party. This you, book you is also on my Amazon list. <laughs> yeah. It's, because I it's need. Great. <laughs> I need. I, I'm very um, entertained that you have this as <laughs> your fifth one because I think that's amazing. So, what is your number five? So, my number five is a book that I had been looking forward to. I got it on Libro. Uh, thank you, Libro, for uh, sending, continuing to send us books to read. Uh, but uh, this is called I Kissed Shara Wheeler by Casey McQuiston. This is Casey McQuiston's foray into young adult writing. Uh, normally, you know, she originally wrote um, One Last Stop, which was the one about the train where the girl like kind of gets stuck in a paranormal leap with a girl from the 1970s. But this book doesn't really have anything magical like that. So it was kind of a different foray on also this book uh, starts with a kiss. It's called I Kiss Shara Wheeler. Um, so it's about a girl named Chloe and she is at prom and she's in an elevator and Shara Wheeler kisses her. Now Shara Wheeler has a boyfriend and uh, the boyfriend and her next door neighbor have all been kissed by her. Shara Wheeler disappears right after prom. So it turns into this like whole scavenger hunt. Where is she? What happened to her? Um, that she has left for the three of them. But here's the really strange thing about this book that I did not expect. And it's that they go to a religious school. Now, Chloe is gay and she does go to the school, but she has signed a like a contract like everyone does at this religious school saying that she won't... Uh, be involved in anything that's like sexually promiscuous or anything like that while she's attending the school. So this is kind of an interesting thing that this girl, Shara Wheeler, whose dad is the principal of this religious school, kissed her. Okay, so it's kind of this whole journey, not just like it's cute because they're following this like where is she scavenger hunt, but also because it's talking about religion um, and these kind of religious institutions of which we both attended. Um, I, I mean, I was very connected with things like this that were happening in this book because I thought the commentary on it was great. Um, it, I think that's why I enjoyed it so much is because I connected with it. Now, the book itself was very cute and the ending was adorable. Um, I don't think that it was like the deepest 
commentary. I, I have read another book about that that like hit me so hard. Um, but this book, I think, was a very good start into the young adult world and the uh, topics that have to do with that. So interesting, really cute. That's why it was my five. I did give it four stars. Okay. So for my four star, I read William Shakespeare's The Avengers, The Complete Works. This is all four of the Avengers movies, but written by William Shakespeare. Now, did you not read something similar to this before? Yes. Also by Ian Dosher, uh, I read Get Thee Back to the Future, which is referenced in here. That's funny. When you get into Endgame and they're talking about Back to the Future, he actually references it by that same name. <laughs> um, so Ian Dosher just does a complete rewrite of the scripts as if William Shakespeare had written them, although he does a bunch of other weird things in here. Mm -hmm. If you go through all the things that Hawkeye says, literally every line he says has something to do with birds. <laughs> things like that. And okay. the let me show you, this book, every page has two columns of dialogue in it wow. so this took me forever to read this is like 300 pages that could have all been like a total of 600 but pages. dense it's, it's a dense... so dense so right. tough to read but i also picked out stuff in infinity war that i didn't pick out in the movie that he called out but oh. it really was there interesting so it's if you can read william shakespeare go for it just give yourself some time Pace yourself. How many stars did you give it? I gave it four stars because it was so dense and so difficult to read. Yeah, I gave it four stars. My number four book, uh, which I gave 4.5 stars. So everything from here on up is a 4.5 star book for me. This book is called All Her Little Secrets. It's by Wanda M. Morris. I read this book because it was part of the Literally Dead book club. That's Books and Lala's book club. Uh, and it is the story of Elise, who is a lawyer in, I believe, like around Atlanta, Georgia area. And she's kind of a, like, she's an African-American. She's, uh, works for a very large corporation. And she's kind of having this, like, side thing with her boss. And then one day, her boss ends up dead. And they're pretty sure it's a murder. So she, because of optics, gets promoted up to his position because the company is having issues with like racism mm. uh, things. And uh, so she's kind of like, like she feels like she's the token Afro person uh, in this company. And then she starts to kind of dig into things and realizes that things are kind of shady and kind of sneaky. And the journey of oh, this book is so interesting. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it, very fast read. I thought the the trip of just the the way the story was told was great. I thought the twists and the reveals were just mm, so good. Like I just I cannot recommend this book enough. Uh, not a book I probably would have picked up either because I have an aversion to the color red, and as you can see, this cover is like red. <laughs> so sometimes the red books kind of turn me off a little bit mm, so gotcha. i'm glad i was able to read that one. No, oh, that sounds like a fun one though mm -hmm. yeah so my number three book this is the shining by stephen king yes you did uh, this thick one uh, uh, 688 pages <laughs> now i did this as an audiobook and it was a really good version of an audiobook mm -hmm. but let's bring up that i was reading this very dense very long book at the same time, I was reading The Avengers. This is why I didn't read very many books this month. Yeah. Because my audiobook was entirely taken up with a 16-hour audiobook. Uh, that was fun. <laughs> I'm going to say this got a four-star out of me. It is probably the better of the Stephen Kings that I've actually read. Right. But... I might not be for Stephen King. Yeah, you know, some people aren't. I know that I have a really hard time as well. Um, how did you think it was comparatively to, like, the movies? So my biggest thing about this is that the the book does not treat the hotel like a character as much. Mm -hmm. But there are chapters entirely devoted to Jack finding out about its history and just telling you about its history, where I feel like if I was to write this book, I would do those as interludes, like 
single pages in between chapters. Right. Um, this gives a lot more to Danny's mentality. The wife gets her own backstory. She's just kind of there for all of the movies. She right. has a reasoning for everything she's doing, and she's a lot deeper in the book. But the, if you don't like Stephen King, you will not like this. My number three book is called Hidden Pictures. It is by Jason Rekulak. I think that's how you say it. And uh, so this is a funny story about this book. Before I get into what this book is about, I did receive this book as an audiobook from NetGalley. And uh, that is how I listened to it. And then after I finished, because I, I literally listened to the book like the day I got it because I was so into what this was about. Uh, after I finished it, I got a book from the publisher because I'm doing a blog tour with them. <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, that's cool. And then I will tell you why it will make a difference how you are reading this book. So this book is about a girl named Mallory who becomes a nanny for a child that uh, is like very precocious, but very sweet. And the child starts drawing pictures that are super creepy. And then a bunch of paranormal stuff start happening. She believes that the child is being channeled by a woman who has been, uh, like something's happened to her. Like either she's been murdered or whatever. And then there's like this whole like suburban lore about this woman who has uh, disappeared and was murdered. So she thinks it's this woman, all right? But there are so, the way this ends is like, oh my gosh, the layers of, oh, uh, just layer upon layer upon twist upon twist. And I was like, I could not put this down. I could not stop listening to it. But if you're going to read it, I recommend either the ebook or the physical copy for this very reason. Let me show you right now. Pictures which I did not have in the audiobook, would have enhanced this experience very greatly because all of the pictures that were drawn by p different people in this book, <laughs> you get to see them. Creepy as all get out, <laughs> let me tell you. So if you like creepy thriller horror books, I believe it is marketed as a horror, although it is not gory, uh, then <laughs> definitely pick this up. I am loving this book. I am keeping this book. It is not being passed on and unless you want to read it. You want to read it. Awesome. So that is my number three 4.5 stars. Excellent. My number two, which is a five star and uh, is probably going to surprise a few people. It's Shipped by Angie Hockman. Mm. So this is a romantic comedy. Yeah, yeah, I, I read a romantic comedy. That, I'll admit that. But Shipped is the story of a girl who is a... She works in the marketing department mm -hmm. of a cruise line, uh, a travel destination company. And she's up for a promotion, but there's her ri sort of rival who works entirely remotely that she dislikes because she thinks that he... You know, tried to steal some of her ideas. Mm -hmm. And he, so the two of them are sent on a cruise together in order to both get them both experience on the ship because neither of them have been to the Galapagos. Neither of them have been on a cruise ship with their cruise line. So they needed to actually get experience. Mm -hmm. So they go to the Galapagos and there's amazing experience and they see each other face to face for the first time. And she falls hard for him, and he reveals that he's kind of got some emotions about her and things. This book, however, is much more than just romantic comedy. Mm -hmm. This also deals with workplace problems. It deals with work-life balance. It deals with family issues. This is a multi-layered book, and it's also a book that's a lot about conservation. Yes. And it's... a Oh, it's a really great book for that. Mm -hmm. I did this as an audiobook. That's my copy. That, yeah, this is her copy of it. Because <laughs> I love it too. <laughs> the voice actress for the audiobook is a Latina, and because a lot of the characters that are in the book are also speaking with uh, Spanish 
speaking accents, she really gives you that sense of authenticity behind mm. all these voices. So it's, cool. it was really good to listen to. She has lots of personality in it. Mm -hmm. So it's really... This is really warming, especially after the last two books you just heard that I read. <laughs> I then come to this and I'm just like, <gasps> I can breathe. So, yes, five star. Surprisingly. Yeah. My number two book is because I am starting to read one Karen Slaughter book a month, okay. if I can, although the month of May might be a little tricky because I have a lot of review books. But I read The Good Daughter by Karen Slaughter, uh, as you can tell. Chonky book, I believe. Yeah. This is 640 pages long. I also, I did kind of a hybrid of this one. I listened to it and then I was like, I would pick it up and read it along with the audiobook. So it allowed me while I was working to be able to listen to it, which is how I got through it at all. So this book uh, follows two sisters, Charlotte and Samantha. Now they have had something really traumatic happen to them when they were younger. And you see a little bit of that at the beginning of the book. So then you flash forward 25 years later, where Charlotte, I believe it's Charlotte, is involved in a school shooting. So it kind of brings back a little bit of the trauma of what happened to her in her childhood. But as you come to start to realize the stuff with the school shooting might semi be connected to what happened to them 25 years ago. And throughout the book, you will return to what happened in the past. But while you are given the same situation, you're given it with a little more information or from a different sister. So sometimes you'll see what happens to Charlotte. Sometimes you'll see what happens to Samantha. And sometimes you think you will know what happens but then you're given another viewpoint or another bit of information and it turns it completely on its head. This is my favorite Karen Slaughter to date. I loved it more than False Witness. I, you know, but this is only my second one. So, you know, <laughs> that's kind of saying a lot. But I will say that this book was so good, which is why it's my number two. Even though it's very long, I felt like the way it was written was just so interesting and like being shocked every time you get back to the past and especially because like I could see the chapters um of when I was on the audiobook so it's like chapter one chapter whatever and then it says what really happened to Samantha and you're like what <laughs> so when you can see those and I mean it I'm not telling you what really happened to Samantha, but when you see these kind of things and you're like oh my gosh something else is happening that I can't so satisfying when you find out, but so heartbreaking what happens to the people in this book. There was one chapter I was going to throw up. I was so stressed out and traumatized by what was happening, I almost threw up. Karen so Slot is really good at that. Trigger warning. This is probably one of the worst scenes I have ever read in that kind of thing. <laughs> I, I I just trigger warning, man. It, I will not tell you what it is, but man, so good. So good. Okay, we're in the home stretch. Number, Number one. one's Piranesi by Suzanne Clark. This. <sighs> okay, so you guys need to go onto my TikTok. One of the pin posts talks about a set of dreams that I had when I was a child dealing with a prince who is locked in a series of dungeons and he can't escape from them. They're almost randomized. Hi. This book is about a guy who calls himself Piranesi and he is in this mansion that's mm -hmm. loaded with huge, gorgeous statues all representing different things. And it's not actually randomized and constantly randomized, but it's a maze. It's very much lab Like thousands of rooms. Yes, right? several thousands of rooms. He has mapped them and numbered them in his head. There is different levels. There is tides that come through and just smash through everything. And sometimes things will appear out of nowhere. <laughs> so then there's other characters that are here. And that begins the problem. Because someone is using somebody 
for nefarious purposes. And even though there is only like three, four, or five characters that are interacting during the course of the story, you get a lot of different directions that this could go. And it was just, it resonated so much. Five star. Well, I, when I started reading this book last month, I got like maybe a chapter and I was like, yep, Marshall's going to love this book. If you are a fan of the lore for the Backrooms or some of the SCP series, th there you go. Mm -hmm. This is basically a book from the Backrooms. And don't let it intimidate you either. Like, I let it intimidate me because I was like, man, this is, I've heard that you don't know what's going on. And I was like, I don't want to be confused or uh, trust me. It's easy. It will get there. <laughs> trust me. It is really easy to grasp what is going mm -hmm. on here. Mm -hmm. Very well done. Exactly. All right, we're down to my number one for a completely different change of pace. All right, my favorite book this month is Queen of the Tiles by Hannah Alcalf. This book was definitely on one of my uh, tops anticipated when I heard what it was about. And it is a, a kind of a young adult mystery book where Najwa, uh, she goes to a Scrabble competition and it takes place in Kuala Lumpur, uh, but she hasn't been back to Scrabble competitions since her best friend died of very mysterious circumstances the year before. So she goes to the Scrabble competition and uh, they're, they, need, they need to find a new queen of the tiles, you know, one who is the best at Scrabble. She wants this title, but... All of a sudden, on her friend's Instagram account, comes some really interesting Scrabble pictures with clues where people are now trying to figure out, did she die naturally or was she murdered? So, that happens in this book as well. It is so cute. I mean, I... Ugh. I, I, will, I want to read this book again. It's so cute. But it's not all fun and games. Like, if you like Truly Devious, if you like uh, Good Girl's Guide to Murder, it's kind of like that. But I would say there are some other deeper things that are happening in here where it comes to, like, your own self-identity when it comes to the people that you surround yourselves with. But, you know, give me a book about a competition, about games, I'm there. Give me a book about murder mystery and a game, I'm really there. So, this book, yes. What do you think? Okay, on the back it says Catalyst is 15 points. Yes, and you learn so many new words in this book. Because it's exactly like that through the whole thing, where she in her head is like, it's like, this situation, da da da, is this word worth this many points? All, like, all through this. The Scrabble references are everything. When I first saw the cover of this book, I thought it was Mahjong. Right, and I could see why, because you see all the Some tiles. of those yeah. tiles look like Mahjong tiles, right. the backs of them. But, like, this idea of of the Scrabble competition, the murder mystery, the the clues being done with Scrabble tiles, that seems fun. And it, mm -hmm. it sparks things in the brain. Right, so is this another cells. one you're stealing from me? Yes? Okay, all right, so, yay. <laughs> Why not? Right, so there we have it. Those are all of our favorite books for April. Jonas and May should be equally as interesting. Hopefully we'll read point. more books next month. Oh my goodness. Um, and make sure you're following us on social media because, of course, we're posting all that content on TikTok and Instagram for you as well. Uh, but we want to hear what was your favorite book for April. Recommendations down below. Tell us. Exactly. But until next time, stay zany.